Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today I'm talking about what I think is the best sounding version of the classic album, The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist we put together every week, and the Patreon page. So make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, it's no secret that The Dark Side of the Moon is by far my most favorite album of all time. I've got a bunch of different copies of it, and I get a bunch of grief from my wife and friends about, do you really need all these different pressings of The Dark Side of the Moon? And my response is always, well, yes, I have multiple versions of them. None of them are the same copy. They're all different pressings and they sound different. So kind of what I want to do today is talk about what I think is the best sounding version of this album and what is the best version maybe to have to or to buy on vinyl if, uh, if you don't want to break the bank because I think that uh, they're not going to be the same pressing. So six different pressings I did for, for this review. And I've got more copies than this, but these are the six best copies that I have in my collection. I know there's like a 1A, 1B pressing, uh, original pressing that everyone loves. It's supposed to be like out of this world, but I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of money on that pressing to have in my collection, even though I know I'd, I'd love to have it. There's also a, a UHQR version from the early 80s that everyone raves about. I don't have that in my collection. I'm just going to go over what I have and what uh, what I went through. So I've got the uh, original U.S. pressing, which uh, sounds absolutely great. Uh, there's none, none of these sound bad, I'll, I will say that off the top. But uh, it's the uh, original U.S. pressing. I have the 1979 first press mobile fidelity. There was a second press, I think, from 81 that they did. I don't have that one in my collection. I've got the, the 79. The album jacket looks kind of beat up, but the, uh, the record itself looks absolutely fantastic. I have a copy of the 30th anniversary pressing, which is kind of widely seen uh, as one of the best, if not the best, sounding versions of this album. I have the very underrated uh, 40th anniversary pressing. It's uh, it's never really been it is you know it, it's never really been one of my favorites in my collection. I uh, I probably as far as the the six go, I'd probably actually rank it pretty pretty close to the bottom. But uh, you know that that's another one I used. I do have the 2016 uh, reissue that uh, I think is always also since it's been released has been kind of held up as one of the the better sounding versions. And then I've got this new 50th anniversary pressing that just came out this year. So when I put these albums on and really kind of broke them down and really looked at them, first off, I'll say I listened to them all at the same volume on my Fluence RT85 turntable. You know, it's not uh, super high on turntable, so I can't really discuss, you know, the very small intricacies on each one of these albums. But what I'm mainly looking at is overall clarity of the album, looking for any kind of distortion, volume issues, uh, you know, things that really would stand out really on a kind of any standard turntable that a lot of people out there have and why none of the six sound bad. I think all six of these sound okay. I feel like a couple of them really don't sound as good as they should for the amount of money they go for. The first one, of course, is the Mobile Fidelity version from 1979. Mobile Fidelity is, you know, really kind of held up there as like the gold standard with, with, with pressings. I wasn't a big fan of this. This this one tends to run, I want to say, is like 100 150 bucks online. I think that for the price you pay for it, there are much better versions out there than what you're getting with, with this pressing. And the one thing I noticed right away when I listened to, when I compared the 30th anniversary pressing and the 40th anniversary pressing, is how big of a difference uh, sound-wise there was between the two albums. There's a much better clarity overall sound presentation on the 30th anniversary than there was on the 40th. So I'm not really sure what the issue was w with that pressing, but you know, the 40th anniversary, I kind of put down, like I said before, I put down at the bottom with that, uh, with that MoFi. So for me, I think there was a very clear winner from these six, as far as what is the best sounding version of this album. And I was actually pretty surprised by it because I was not expecting it to be this one for me. I think it is this new 50th anniversary pressing when this was announced and they were talking about this new remaster that, that, that they were going to do. 
I kept thinking to myself, come on, I already have the 30th, 30th anniversary pressing. I've got the 2016 re reissue. Both of those sound absolutely fantastic. How could you really better the sound quality that, uh, that is already on those albums? And they 100% did it on this album. The, the clarity on this album, the separation between instruments is, is far superior than any of those other pressings, in my opinion. And the, there are so many like small, intricate things uh, in a song like uh, On the Run that I just didn't pick up, even on, the, on as great as the 30th anniversary pressing is, I didn't pick it up on, those, uh, on that pressing, but I did on this, on this new 50th anniversary. I know, the big downfall with this pressing is it's very expensive and it's been kind of hard to find. I haven't seen too many copies of the 50th anniversary box set available out there for, for people to buy. I pre-ordered it online. I got a copy of it. I did a whole video before this, before the box set came out about how I felt the first off, it wasn't really all that needed because there was, uh, there was really nothing new in this new box set that wasn't in the immersion box set that came out several years ago. And for the $300 that they're charging for it, is this box set, is this album, the, as great as it sounds, worth that $300? No, I don't think it is. There is a better version out there, not sound quality wise, because I think the 2016 remaster isn't uh, that big of a difference between this album, the 50th anniversary pressing, and the 26 re 2016 reissue. I don't think there's that big of a sound difference between the two albums that uh, that's worth getting this box set. As much as I love this pressing of it and how great it sounds, you can pick up the 2016 for you know 25, maybe 30 bucks. It's, it's definitely th under 30 bucks. I've seen it in stores recently. When you compare that to three hundred dollars you have to pay, pay you for this one that's why i think that 2016 if you're if you don't own a copy of this album and you're looking to have just a really good sounding version of it i still think as great as this 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 50th anniversary pressing sounds that 2016 remaster is still the way to go with it i still hope eventually we'll see this 50th anniversary release get released outside of the box set because like i said it is such a great sounding album. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Like I said, the the clarity, the separation that uh, that you get on this new release is unbelievable. But at you know ten times the amount you're going to spend for that 2016 reissue, it's really kind of hard to drop that kind of money. I know for a lot of people on that box set. So hopefully, eventually, we'll see it get released as a as a standard release even if they charge you know 40 45 bucks for it i think it's still if it's 40 or 45 dollars compared to you know 25 or 30 dollars for a 2016 reissue at that point i could say it's maybe go with that 50th anniversary release because it's that it is a a, a a noticeable difference between those two releases and i think the packaging for that 50th anniversary box set is really great they did a really nice job with that box set but dropping 300 bucks for for a single album releases is really tough even even as much as i love the dark side of the moon it was it was hard for me to grab that one but let me know what you guys think if you enjoy the episode make sure you give me the old thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and that's all i got until next time keep on spinning peace